Greetings, 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 beautiful black people. How y'all doing? Coming back to you with an update about the Ghana residency issue. So, you know, last time I told you about three weeks ago, that's some people um, who were being asked, uh, we went through their residency. They had gotten everything that I know of that you're supposed to have. Uh, including their two Ghanaian citizens with passports that come with them to immigration and that will sign as a guarantor on their behalf, copies of their financial statements showing that they have the, the resources to take care of themselves, um, their lease or land documents showing, you know, demonstrating their intention to reside here in the country. And yet when we got uh, to the counter at immigration, they were asking for some letter from Office of Diaspora Affairs. So for the past three weeks, I've been trying to get some information and clarity on this letter. I reached out directly because I already had had uh, the Director of Diaspora and Affairs uh, contact uh, in my phone. I chatted with him before, even before I come back to Ghana. So I reached out to him directly, sent him messages. I called, no answer. Sent him WhatsApp messages. For weeks just no response whatsoever send me messages directly to his phone not via whatsapp but just straight text messages no response <sighs> talked to another brother that was you know had some people who were encountering the same problem because i find it odd that it just this issue just popped up you know out of the blue asking for this letter because we know for a fact that We've been helping people get residency before then, and they weren't asking for this letter. But anyway, I digress. So I wanted to hear firsthand out of his mouth what is up with this letter. Now, for me, it's still what I'm, I, I eventually let me let me go in order. Eventually, he did respond to me on text message. Uh, what this past weekend? And uh, gave, I asked him to for an appointment to come to his office up at Jubilee House, which is the government house. Um, he gave me his personal assistance contact information, told me to contact her and make an appointment. Okay, thank you. I did that. Um, made an appointment for Wednesday, which was yesterday at 11 o'clock. I show up at his office. He's nowhere to be found. He wasn't there. He was, I waited for an hour. 12 o'clock came. At this point, I'm like, nah, this is not right. This is disrespectful, right? So I go to the secretary because she knows I'm there. I checked in with her when I when I got there. Uh, she told me when I first got, oh, he's not here. He's on his way. Just have a seat. So from 11 to 12, I'm sitting there. Hey, this man doesn't show up. I go back to her. I said, listen, <laughs> is he coming to the office or what? I've been sitting here now for an hour. She's, oh, wait a minute. Let me call. Let me call. So she gets on the phone, calls him. He tells her, oh, he's in a training. And he's going to be out of the office until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> that he won't be back until after that. And I was like, oh, my God. Right? I was livid. Y'all, I was vexed. I just could not believe. Because, you know, what you even have to go through to get into a Jubilee House or Flagstaff House, whatever you want to call it. This is normally where the president is, where his office is. It's where he lives. But this current president is not living there. He's living in his personal house. But still, you know, it's like going to the White House, like going to Capitol Hill, right? So, and then, you know, the security and sign in for the first place. You got to sign in. It's, it's, it's not just you walk up there. You know what I'm saying? It's the military, people everywhere police so anyway going through all of that I w I'm glad that I went through it because now I, I mean I know I, I know the process I know what to do if I ever have to go back there again which she, what he ended up telling her on the phone was to ask me to come back the following day which was today you know um, sorry I'm not coming today come back tomorrow which is what I ended up doing I was pissed off but I did it because hell I gotta do it because people need their residency right so i went back today he was there 
Uh, I met with him. He remembered me because I had also introduced Sankofa Repatriation Assistance Program to the Office of Diaspora and Affairs before I even left the United States. I had sent an official introductory letter. He remembered the letter. He likes what the program is about. So he, he was, when I told him, he said, oh, yeah, I remember. I have your letter, you know. So um, we talked. I asked him what's going on with this this new requirement that they're asking. So he began to explain to me that this all came about because in the past, they have written letters for people uh, to assist them. And, it, and so now immigration is acting like this is a requirement, which, which is not, you know. He told me that there is this new act. Uh, it's called the Homeland Security Act. This legislation that's supposed to be passed that's going to define what the requirements are for residency, for staying in the country, and all of these things. Uh, they're waiting for the new ministers because this is a new government. You know, we just had elections last in December. So the vetting process of the ministers is finishing up and they are going to be uh, sworn in. And he said in, a, in the next couple of weeks, when these people are sworn in, the first thing, first order of business is to have a meeting on this particular new piece of legislation and they're going to vote in. And he said you know, it's going to pass. And that's going to cover what the requirements are for residency. Now, I'm going to try to reach out to some people I know who worked on that legislation to find out what is in it, because I don't know. But from my understanding, we do have some people from the diaspora who, who worked on that. So I'm hoping it's something favorable for our people. But until it, I, I, you know, get some more information and on that, I can't really speak on what the, what the requirements are going to be. So, in the course of me conversating with um, Mr. Ababio, I, I brought to his attention, I said, you know, them making this letter a requirement for diasporans is actually bur putting extra burden on diasporans that the Chinese and the Lebanese and, and the Indians and all these other people don't have to go through because they don't have to... You don't serve, you don't give letters to these people. Nobody asked them for any additional letter, right? And then, you know, it was like the light bulb came on his head, and he was like, you're right. Ah, that's some, That's a point I'm going to have to bring up in the meeting. You're right. <laughs> you know, like, it's not fair. Exactly. So, he agreed with me on that, and he said he's going to bring that up. Uh... It, it was almost he didn't even, he hadn't even thought about that. That's how you know his reaction was like he hadn't even really just thought about that that they're they're putting an extra burden on the people that they say they want to come. You understand? Okay, so then what he told me to do to try to resolve the immediate problem for those people that I have now that are waiting and whose time is running out is that. For me to get a list of all their names when they enter the country, copies of their passports, send him all of that stuff. He's going to go to immigration. He's going to handle it so that when I take them back, they, they're they not going to be stopped in terms of this letter. So I don't know what that is going to mean for new people. I don't know if that's going to be an ongoing process until this new law passed, but that's what it is right now. So if you are somebody who requested uh, Sankofa Repatriation Assistance Program to help you through the residency process and you're in the country, please, that's the information that I need from you, and I need you to send a copy of your passport to admin at sankofarepat.com and the information, like when you enter the country and all of that stuff. If you have an extension already, I need to know that information, that when you got your extension. All of that so that I can turn all of this over to him so that you can get your residency, okay? You for now, you're still going to need to bring your two Ghanaians. We just, this is just for us to get over this letter part so you can get your residency. But all the other requirements, you still need your two residents, I mean, your two Ghanaian citizens who have their passport. Now, let me explain something to you about the process because it's getting, some people are confused. I, I think that I... 
put out the information clearly, but still people are not, I don't know, following directions or something. Listen, when you enter this country, I don't care if you're coming from the UK. I don't care if you're coming from Jamaica where you get visa on arrival. It doesn't matter where you come from. The visa itself only allows you to enter the country. That's it. It doesn't allow you to stay here permanently. Even if you get a three-month visa, it doesn't mean that you come here and you get to stay for three months. If you get a one-year visa, it doesn't mean that you get to come here and stay one year. If you get a five-year visa, it doesn't mean that you get to come here and stay five years. The visa itself is only to enter. That's it. Nothing more. And when you enter, you have 60 days. 60. You have 60 days to stay in this country. Particularly, I know if... Uh, from most countries, it's 60 days. 60. Six zero. Doesn't matter how long your visa is for. Okay, so if the visa is a five-year visa, that just means that for five years, you don't have to apply for another visa to enter the country. You can come in, go out. Come in, go out. Up for five years. That's all that that means. Doesn't mean that you get to stay here that long. You only can stay in this country for 60 days. Okay, listen, when you when they when you enter the country, they're gonna stamp that you enter. They're gonna stamp the date that you enter, and they literally write on there 60 days. Look in your passport, people. Look, read. They literally tell you you have 60 days in the country. Every day, when you get to day 60, every day you overstay. Every single day is a fine. It's a fine. So you can think, oh. Uh, I, you know, I overstayed by three, four months. Let me just go apply for residency now. No, because what's going to happen when you go apply for residency, they're going to say you overstayed for three months. So for th three months, every day that you overstay, you got to pay for those days. And it's a daily rate. I don't know what the rate is anymore. I just sent a message to, um, immigration officer that I know and asked him because I, and so I can be able to tell people what that daily rate is. It might be 25 Ghana CDs for every day. Every day. It might be 30. I don't know. I'll find out. But every day you overstay, it's 30. Day one, you overstay. Day 61, it's 30 Ghana CDs. So if you aren't able to get your residency before the 60th day, you need to go get an extension. Okay? That extension that will allow you to, to stay an extra 60 to 90 days or whatever. Right? But you have to go and pay for that. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen. Say you overstay a month or two. And now you want to leave to go somewhere, travel, go visit somewhere. At the airport, they're going to check your passport. They're going to see that you overstay. And they're going to accost you. They're not going to let you leave until you pay for those days that you overstay. If you decide that, okay, I've overstayed um, a month past my 60 days and now you want to go apply for residency, before they allow you to apply for residency, they're going to want you to get in compliance. They're going to want you to pay for those 30 days that you overstayed first. You got to get into compliance first. You got to get, because you, you're in the country illegally. They can't process a, a, a illegal person's residency. So you got to make yourself legal again, which means you got to pay for those 30 days that you overstay. Then they will accept your application for, uh, for residency. Or, you know, if you want to leave, you can only leave if you pay for the days you've overstayed. Overstaying in the country is a crime. You cannot, you are illegal. You are in the country illegally. You have to. And they're not going to just say, oh, well, no, they, they want the money. Okay. So once you apply for residency, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need two. If you're married to a Ghanaian, the Ghanaian person can apply for you. Your spouse can apply for you uh, on your behalf. And that spouse has to show that they have the financial capabilities of taking care of you, that they have resources, they have money. So they can be one of your guarantors with their financial 
documents showing that they have the resources. Not you. At that point, if they're applying on your behalf, they have to demonstrate that they have the resources to take care of you. Then you still need the second Ghanaian as a guarantor. So you need those two. If you're applying on your own behalf, you still need the two Ghanaians, but you can request the residency on your on your own behalf. You don't have any Ghanaian requested for you. At that point, you have to show your financial records that you have the resources to take care of yourself. Plus, you're going to need either land documents or a lease because they consider those things to demonstrate your in true intentions to reside in the country. It's only 150 Ghana CDs, uh, which is less than $30. So Ghana residency is not very expensive, and it takes about uh, six to eight weeks to get your passport back. So I've I've said I've said these things in a number of videos over and over again. I tell people, I explain this process to people when they arrive. I tell everybody. I and I know I do. You have 60 days to be in this country. You have 60 days. You have 60 days. I tell everybody you have 60 days. And yet people overstay. And um So it's nothing I can do at that point. If you overstay, I can't do anything until you go pay for the days you overstay to get into compliance so that we can move forward. There's literally nothing I can do about anybody who's in the country illegally. That one is beyond anything Sister Yaha can do. Okay? So you have to be in compliance. You have to. There's just You have to. Okay? So with that being said... Um, Right now what I'm doing is collecting everybody's information so that I can get that turned over to the director uh, ASAP so we these people can, because a lot of people are literally either on their extension, some are overstayed, those people I can't do anything for until they get into compliance. And then some are uh, like coming up to, 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 the, to the wire in terms of their 60 days. But we're going to work it out. For whatever. <laughs> All right. If y'all have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Reach out. Sister Yaz here. All right. Love you guys. Bye-bye.